Hey, Santa Groover here. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to show you what I've been experimenting with using MIDI data and potentially using MIDI data and MIDI instruments in a live performance setting. Now this has been done before, but I wanted to throw Super Collider into the mix. So let's get started. Here we have four tracks, a melody track, a harmony track, a bass track, and a percussion track. Let's go into Super Collider and make sure everything is initialized and connected. And making sure we have our melody track, which we do not. Go ahead and have this on. All right, sounding good. Make sure we don't have any latency. And no stuck notes. All right, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and evaluate this block of code for our melody. Sounding good. Let's go to our harmony track and evaluate our harmony code. That one runs a little longer, so I had to cut it short. Now let's go to our bass track and evaluate our bass line here. All right, simple enough. And let's go ahead and move into our percussion track and evaluate our percussion code. All right, so now you can tell that all four tracks have a very specific instrument, a very specific color, and they do blend quite nicely. So I want them to play simultaneously, but designated parts as you would see in a score. So let's go ahead and take a look at the score. So here I use P bind F for my melody, my harmony, my bass, and my percussion. And here, when it's highlighted, you can see that it is a giant block of code. So let's have a listen. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, so quite muddied up. I think it was uh, quite a dissonant there, and that is experimental electronic music, but that is not my experimental electronic music. So what happened? Well, as you saw just one track um, being active there, that was the melody track actually playing all parts, the percussion, the bass, the harmony, in addition to the melodic line. So why don't we go ahead and try highlighting all tracks? and making sure it's on record. And let's have a listen. You may have already guessed what is about to happen.
still a little too messy for my taste. So what you may have gathered with seeing all these tracks activated was that all four instruments were playing simultaneously, but they were playing all parts. So you, you were hearing 16 voices. So how do we go around this? Well, the answer is in Logic Pro, in a window setting, actually specifically a MIDI environment window. And you can go into this environment window using the shortcut Command-0 to call this up. So we have our melody track, harmony track, bass track, and percussion. And so our melody track here, instrument channel 1, harmony 2, and bass 3, and percussion 4. And that's fine here. You can see it lined up accordingly next to the arrangement window. So that is all well and good. And you've also may have noticed that under the channel strip, we have a MIDI channel. And I have personally manually designated one for instrument one, two for two, three for three, and four for four. Now, if you open up a new project, you may find that it will have defaulted to all for all tracks. So you might want to assign accordingly there. Before we go back into Super Collider to uh, check this out and, 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 and try this out again, a couple things. The first is our MIDI channel 1 here in Logic is the same as MIDI channel 0 in Super Collider. Super Collider always begins a list or an array at the zeroth value, so consider 1 in Logic to be 0 in Super Collider. And now, to have each playing, let's, let's, let's see if that works. So we've assigned our MIDI channel here accordingly. Let's go ahead and highlight that and try that again. All right, so that does not work. Oh, a couple windows here. All right, so we go back into our MIDI environment window and we must assign something to this mixer here, this uh, mixer of our MIDI instruments. And that is going to go, uh, you'll, you'll have to go under new and that is going to be our channel splitter. Now you can see here that uh, we've got a sum channel here. I do disregard that. I go one step down to our channel one here and I connect it to melody. That's my first instrument after all. And our harmony and our bass and our percussion. All right, so let's try this out. We've, we've, we've split the channels. Everything should be working accordingly. Let's go back to Super Collider. And rather than play this score, let's go all the way back up to where we have first started our note on, note off messages, okay? Real quick, let's take a look at what note on is in MIDI in. Our note on has these values, our MIDI channel, ranging from 0 through 15, which actually, let's go back to logic real quick. is the same as MIDI channel 1 through 16. All right, so MIDI channels, uh, that is our first value, uh, choosing between 0 all the way up to 15, a key number with the value 0 through 127, 60 being designated for middle C as our MIDI note number, and our velocity, which is the same as the attack or the speed or the volume that is outputted. And that is 64, so right in the middle, probably between, you know, mezzo forte and forte, respectively. So let's go ahead and get that back in order. And see for ourselves if all these MIDI channel numbers are designated and assigned accordingly.
All right, so each of these tracks were highlighted. Let's go ahead and, and be sure that only our melody track is highlighted. All right, so much better. So that is our first channel. So that has us uh, checking out one, and that should be our harmony instrument. Okay, so not, and this should be our bass instrument. And MIDI channel three. All right, so this is a no-go. We still don't have our MIDI channels assigned accordingly, so let's go back into our environment, hitting Command-0, of course. And let's see, we're, we're going to need to add one final thing, and that is our physical input. And I learned this by asking a question in a comment section on Field Steel's one of his videos, which I'll put in the description below. And this is what solved everything. So we have our IAC, IAC driver bus, and we're going to connect that to our channel splitter. And now let's see if this works. We've got our melody instrument. And this should be our harmony now. And our bass. Well, it's bass-ish. Uh, that is a high register for my bass instrument. And our percussion. And there we go. We have our MIDI channels assigned. Using our physical input to be put into the channel splitter. So let's, with this, let's go ahead and have a listen to our score. And there you have it. All instruments playing their parts that uh, they have been assigned and uh, determined by Super Collider using this P bind def score. So this is something to consider for performing uh, in, in, a, in a, performing, a performance setting, you know, using experimental music, maybe an instrument or a voice with this in the background. Now, the one drawback of this demo is I currently have not found a way to record. So if I hit record, even if these are all highlighted, and I go ahead and run it and record it by hitting the shortcut R, So you can see nothing is recorded, even though it was assigned, that recording was assigned. And I think that has to do with the physical input. If I take this out and just go ahead and make sure this is on only, I can record. Now I believe it will record either just the melody or it might record all parts only in the melody track.
So it's a little bit of a mess right now as far as recording this music live. But until then, I'm definitely excited about the prospects of at least having MIDI instruments in a background and, and playing violin over these, these kinds of atmospheric textures and, and harmonies and what have you. So hopefully you enjoyed that. That is so far my experience with MIDI data and also connecting different tracks and also scoring different parts in SuperGlider. So hopefully uh, that does give you some inspiration if you wanted to try it out yourself in a live performance setting. I definitely want to utilize this in the coming years if, if I can. So this is pretty exciting. Again, always thank you for watching and listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Thanks again.